Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, who forgot to set up this PowerPoint, right? And welcome to Podcast 2.2. We'll learn about atomic history, Democritus, Dalton, Thompson, Rutherford, Bohr, electron jumping, woohoo, and the current model of the atom, which sounds like an awful lot of stuff and an awful lot of dudes that were pretty exciting if you watched the video. And let's hop to it. Theories change over time. Democritus had the idea, by the way, we're talking about the atom, of the atom. But he was the laughing philosopher because he had no proof. Uh, he had no proof, and plus, he was going against Aristotle. And Aristotle people liked. So if people like you, then you are right. That's one thing you learn in chemistry until about 2,000 years later, and then you'll find out being right is right. Dalton was the next guy. So this is the first guy that had evidence. So he's the first guy that really counts. Dalton had his postulates for his atomic theory. Uh, Dalton was missing most of our common knowledge of protons, neutrons, and electrons. This was all Dalton had. Whee! This is it. He had four of them. Atoms are indestructible. Sadly, that was wrong. Atoms of the same element are identical. Sadly, that was wrong. Compounds are a combination of atoms. Wonderful job. Atoms are rearranged in reactions. Wonderful job. Now, this part is that atoms are indestructible. I said that's not true. But it is true unless you're talking about nuclear reactions. And atoms of the same element are identical, um, which is the only difference is something have a neutron, which may make it a little more um, nuclear um, or not, may decay nuclearly a little more. Dalton's model was missing protons, neutrons, electrons, clouds, and that'll do it. And it was a ball. Boink! That was Dalton's model. Atoms are made of little balls, and that's it. Thompson added the electron. So what Thompson noticed is you take a hunk of chunk of something, this should be something right down, hunk of chunk of something, shoot some electricity through it, a mysterious beam of light will shine through. And then if you put a magnet over here, say so it's a positive end of the magnet this year, it'll go because it loves the magnet. Now, light doesn't normally do this. Um, light is not attracted to magnets, or else if I held a magnet in the air, light would go towards it, and it would be very bright, and the rest of the area would be very dark. So Thompson added the electron with a cathode ray tube, and it showed all matter has a negative part. Guess what that part is? If you guessed electron, you're super smart. Thompson's model it had the electron, but it's missing protons, neutrons, a uh, nucleus, I suppose, nucleus, and clouds. I don't know what you're talking about with these clouds. Ah. And all he added was that his model looked like this, a ball with little chunks of electrons in it. And that model is called, what does that look like? Oh, of course, it looks like plum pudding. Welcome to being British and eating terrible food. Plum pudding, you'd have pudding with pieces of plum skin in it. Mmm, plum skin. And if that doesn't make your mouth water, nothing will. Rutherford added the nucleus. Rutherford's experiment was the gold foil experiment. So what he did was he took a radioactive source. In the movie, they talked about a machine gun that forever shoots alpha particles, which are big. Hawking things. Okay. So he's shooting alpha particles, which are big, heavy things with a mass of four and charge of two, to go through it. And most of them go through. I could do that all day. But very, 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 very few of them bounced back. So what he concluded was that there's a small, dense, positively charged, mostly empty space nucleus. And the analogy they made is the nucleus is the size of a soccer ball in Soldier Field. And the electrons are, whoops, are as far out as Mr. Folly's seats. Mr. Folly never has good seats for any game. So, so here's a little soccer ball. Here's Soldier Field. And if you're sitting way up here in the cheap seats, that's how far out the electrons are. If you've never been a soldier field, yeah, you don't go if you get seats as bad as mine. So this is what Rutherford expected, and this is what Rutherford got. So depending on the size of the nucleus, if you know it's like one in eight thousand or something like that, 
Um, depending on the size of the nucleus, if the nucleus was really big, you'd have a lot of deflections. If the nucleus was itty bitty little tiny, you'd have way fewer. So there you go. Rutherford's experiment learned positive, and we have this on there. Positive. I guess I'll keep that on a small, dense nucleus. By the way, the nucleus, the way he described it, nucleus is the Latin word for a little nut. So he said there's a little nut in the middle that stuff bounces off of. Positive, small, dense nucleus. And that was it. Um, missing um, clouds. And he didn't specifically call things protons or neutrons. Bohr. Bohr saw these things. These are called spectral lines or just spectra. And what he noticed is that everything gave off a specific spectra. If you add energy to it, it will emit specific lines. Okay? So this would be an emission spectra. And this is an absorption spectra. And different elements have different ones. Say this kind of looks like a barcode, and every barcode is pretty much unique. Um, and if it's pretty much unique, then you can use it to identify things. So if something falls from level 5 down to level 2, I guess is what that's labeled, then it will emit this color of light. And if it falls from level 4 to level 2, it'll emit this color of light. And what's different is, is the, I'm going to call this a ring, ring size changes with different atoms because you'd have different numbers of protons in here, and the different number of protons would have them be closer or farther away, kind of like you sit closer or farther away from people that you like or dislike. So, for example, everyone sits far away from Mr. Foley in the front of the room, and people sit very close to people that are well-liked. Well, sorry, Owen. So, um, you get these different colors that come out, and it makes a specific barcode. So, Bohr suggested that there are rings where you are either here or you are here. Or you are on this level, or you're on this level. You are never in between. So there is no spot in between. So these he called quantum leaps. And no one uses this word but me, but I like to use the word teleport. So the electrons are here, and then they are here, and that energy change of the teleport is emitted. So falling, I think this is on here next, all or nothing energy level, so it's the teleporting that happens. Closer to the nucleus is lower energy than farther from the nucleus. Electrons emit energy when they fall. Ah! Electrons absorb energy when jump. Oh, they absorb energy to jump up there. The ground state is the lowest level of energy. Excited state is higher than normal. There's a larger spectrum of light than the visible light spectrum. And the visible light spectrum is red, orange, yellow, green, blue. And then don't forget, there's purple, too, which is, this is indigo and violet, which is purple. But I'm colorblind, so I don't believe in all those. Quantum theory, this is the current model. Woo! Rings are wrong. This is the one that is correct. This is the correct model of the atom. This is the correct model of the atom. This is the correct model of the atom. Electrons exist in clouds, call them orbitals, and we can predict where they probably are. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Momentum, mass times velocity, and position of a small particle cannot be known at the same time to any degree of certainty. So we call the electron paths orbitals rather than orbits because they don't move in circles because rings are wrong. Shapes of overlapping clouds. So you don't need to draw these pictures, but know that they're funny shapes. Funny shapes. Look at the funny shapes. Those are the shapes of the clouds. Look at that. Look at that. Woo, look at that. That's a silly, silly shape. An electron goes from here to here to here. So the basics of the atom, the particles, protons, electrons, neutrons. Wow, that's, oh, my abbreviations for them, P positive, E negative, and zero. Location of the protons and the neutrons are in the nucleus. And the function of the proton is it determines the identity. Oh, proton is also often called a Z. It's also often called the atomic number. Um, the location of electrons are in clouds outside of the nucleus. Rings are wrong. 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 The function of electron is to determine the chemical reactivity and the charge of the atom. The neutron is in the nucleus and it determines the nuclear stability. Nuclear. And the mass. And then 
we're back to the review. There's a bunch of dudes. Dalton, Thompson, Rutherford, Bohr. Oops. Um, models, billiard ball, plum pudding, planetary, and quantum mechanical model. This is the correct one. This is the correct one. This is the correct one. Experiment, cathode ray, spectral lines, gold foil. Notice I didn't give the experiment to stuff because it's very mathematical. And that is it. So that's what I said, and I'll say toodles. <laughs>